What's going on peeps? It's been a while since I've created a video where I got to have fun. We cover a lot of incredible artists, don't get me wrong, but man does it get tough. So today, I want to spice things up with a group known as Kojim Dip. That's right, another Tally Hall spin-off that has been requested for a while now. This one was founded by the honorary sixth member of the group, Bork Racha. It is an experimental avant-garde jazz metal band known for their chaotic live performances, unique genre fusions, and carrot juice fetish. If you're looking for friendly crossover metal from the beyond, this is the band for you. This group immediately caught my interest when I noticed the luchador mask they wear. One important piece of my own lore is that I used to be a massive professional wrestling fan. I hereby challenge Kojim Dip to a battle royal to see who is the best member of the band. With that being said, what even is Kojim Dip? How did they get started and where do they go? All of that and more will be uncovered in this video. Let's get started. Before his Bora log in Tally Hall Internet Show Ventures, Bora Karacha founded Kojim Dip in Ann Arbor, Michigan around 2004 at the University of Michigan. This wound up as an experimental band blending metal, jazz, opera, and rock. Kojim Dip has quite the fictional backstory, maybe it's real, I don't know. Starting with the introduction of Bora's Kojim Dip persona, Badur the Clumsy Ambassador of the Awesome. Badur the Clumsy emerged from a thousand year slumber and turned on his radio, only to find the music weak, dull, and lacking in intensity. Determined to change this, he teamed up with his childhood rival guitarist Lawrence, whose real name is Jacob Hurley, with other ridiculous nicknames being Oktabis the Keeper of the River of the Lost Souls and the Diplomat of the Doom Axe. They formed a band dedicated to correcting humanity's mistakes and hatched a plan to take rock and roll by storm. Hailing from Detroit, Michigan, Bodar wrote and recorded songs solo while being accompanied by an accordion. In his quest to recruit more wild energetic people who dance incessantly, he wound up finding a few other oddballs. Brian McCorkle, known as Mumu Tits the Sour, Sultan of the Strings. He played the guitar and a saw? Matt Sever or Yudban the Feared, Lieutenant of the Low End, was on bass. Blake Gower called Captain No the Love Machine, Senator of the Skins, played the drums. The more they practiced, the more unhinged they became. Kojum Dip was poised to do unspeakable things like devour your children to death. Pretty cool, right? But what about their actual music? They tell us to imagine metal that goes in and out of different styles mid-song. Metal to jazz, metal to barbershop quartet, metal to weird soundscapes, metal to mediterranean. Got it? Okay. Now they want us to imagine five guys who go completely nuts at live shows, wear unique luchador masks in various colors and capes, and make a $5 show into a $30 performance. Then, we should imagine them using strange instruments like electric bagomas, darbokas, saws, and power drills to add to the song. With all this in mind, they warn us that now that we have Kojim Dip in our head, try to get it out. Lawrence later described the group as a dream where you urgently need to use the bathroom, so you go in the dream and then you wake up to find that you pissed yourself. Yeah. The band held their first concert at the Duderstadt Center on February 18th, 2005 and continued to perform throughout Michigan during 2005 and 2006. They Toward Detroit, Ann Arbor, and Lansing fairly regularly, everyone was warned to watch out. Kojum Dip upload their music through some of their earliest music platforms like MySpace and Vicious Enterprises, as well as launching their own website to allow fans to know when they'll play their next show. Available was a few early demos for Tap 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 and For Lum. Two days before their first show, the greatest demo CD in the universe was apparently published. I say apparently, as currently, the EP is entirely unavailable and no CD copies have surfaced yet. It's basically lost media. The EP is said to mostly include demos. It's no surprise that this group has earned a decent following in the Ann Arbor area, classified as one of the most wild, humorous, life-changing, and entertaining live acts ever. The band aimed to do things no band has done before to be as unique as possible. Alongside aggressive drum work, 
roaring guitars, loud ass screaming, fan interaction, and more over the top behavior on stage. Dip's energetic performance and humor creates a show that excites and engages the audience. Seriously, if I was alive during this time, I'd be moshing with everyone around me. Kojum Dip was this combination of silly dress up, insanity, talent, sarcasm, and genius, promising a live show that will redefine normalcy and leave audiences breathless, making music that doesn't suck. They stood out with tracks like Jabberwocky and Puzzle Dust, with the audience praising their creativity, humor, composition, production quality, and successful fusion of various styles and influences. In 2006, CDs for their second demo EP, Anthropomorphic Bible Assault, were passed around. Kojim Dip had released this 8-track collection and was hoping to work on another, Forged in the Fires of Bleedor, as noted in 2006. Turns out that little was known about this EP until September 4th, 2023, when an old attendee posted pictures of the CD on Facebook. The contents were later taken and uploaded online. The recordings of the seven demo tracks were reused and remastered for future projects we'll get to shortly. There was also a time Kojim Dip nearly went international. In 2006, Kojim Dip competed in the Emergence Festival for a chance to win a record deal and a trip to Germany. They made it to the finals, where they faced off against 12 other bands. In the end, they received 40 votes, which unfortunately wasn't enough to win. Despite the momentum the band seemed to have, Bora had other plans. That same year in late 2006, Bora moved to Los Angeles, causing the band to go on hiatus. Before this trip, Kojim Dip said one last goodbye to Ann Arbor on September 20th, 2006 at The Blind Pig. They covered one of the many The Mind Electric demos inside The Mind of Simon. Bora's Kojim Dip dreams didn't die quite yet. In 2008, Bora remade the Kojim Dip website with a message aimed to attract LA bandmates for Kojim Dip. Bora was looking for two guitarists, a bassist, and a drummer. A reunion show was reportedly held in 2008 at the Alibi, a venue in Ann Arbor which no longer stands today. In 2008, the band's third EP, Turkoff, was released primary consisting of demos, with the final track being a live recording of Reverse Mullet. It was later re-released to MySpace on November 9, 2010. On May 24, 2009, the Kojim Dip YouTube channel uploaded a video from 2007 titled, What is Kojim Dip? It might be footage of an unfinished Kojim Dip documentary. In 2010 to 2011, Bora aimed to form a new chapter of Kojim Dip after recruiting new band members in the LA area, with plans to make a comeback and take over the world again. Sadly, not much progress was made, and Kojim Dip would be resumed as a solo venture in 2011. Being a bit of a nerd, Bora began making Mega Man covers to pass the time under the Kojim Dip brand. At first, he put out these video game covers on YouTube and SoundCloud. On October 3rd, 2012, Video Huego's Volume 1 and 2 were released to Bandcamp, a collection of Mega Man 2 and 3 instrumental rock covers. Apart from some extra drum details in the repeated sections, Bora tried to accurately recreate the three monophonic synth tracks from the Mega Man games using just a guitar and distortion. This involved faking delay effects by having the harmony play slightly after the melody, creating chorus effects, detuning the second guitar, and using the bass to mimic toms. Finally, after a bundle of studio sessions in 2013 hosted by Bora, Kojum Dip released their self-titled album on January 12th, 2014 to their Bandcamp page. All songs were written, performed, mixed, and mastered by Bora. Additional vocals were provided by Blake Gower, Joe Holy, Jacob Hurley, Brian McCorkle, Max Ever, and Mandy Wilson. Blake Gower did a lot of the drum work, Greg Tronic played jazz piano, and Courtney Flynn contributed flute and piccolo. It was described as mathematical jazz metal from the cosmics and college. Unlike previous Tally Hall related projects, the record doesn't have a story or deeper meaning, it's just an album that exists. It includes seven tracks from the band's peak period and two brand new tracks. Most of them come from the Turk Off EP, which were performed live for years before being officially recorded in the studio. The artwork was created by Bora with assistance from Andrew Hussey. One cool note is that if you look at the album cover very closely, you'll notice that the blood vessels in his eyes spell out Kojum Tip. Kind of freaky. Now that we've 
we've covered the background and context, let's dive into discussing this album. Cell kicks off with a bang of roaring guitars and vicious drums following a voice message. I love the random screaming interludes throughout the track. The hook reminds me of a carnival for some reason, maybe it's those light keys. Either way, the energy is incredible. Bora's vocal tone is fairly relaxed, yet it matches the intensity somehow. It's a pretty on-the-nose breakup song where one word appears to ruin it all. There appears to be a lot of regret from the situation, maybe there was some cheating, toxicity involved, or the relationship just didn't work out. Either way, this man appears to be in awe that she would forget about him and not even try to be friends at the very least. It's clear he is lost, trying to make it up to her and using a bullshit or not so sincere way of resolving it. The bridge is quite weird. This man says he's gonna fade away from her life while suggesting she won't find anyone to be by her side. Doing this all because she's just a friend? That line just seems a bit bitter. Definitely works with the anxious vibe here, and given she's likely out of his life, it's whatever. I wonder why she won't follow you. The closest we get to unhinged vocally is this whispery, raspy tone. Why don't you just follow me? That instrumental break where the instruments ramp up is beautiful, especially when the horns come in. Forlum could have worked as the first track given the introduction statement of the band towards the start. A bit more loose and rough instrumentally, the first bridge continues the unpredictability. It goes from just Bora singing to the instruments ramping up to gut-wrenching screams from everybody and guitar solos. A lot of fun and just goes hard overall. You never know what's gonna happen next. Everything will cut out randomly and almost jump scare you out of nowhere. L-U-M stands for love of money. Given that context, I see this as that personal struggle between this infatuation with your wealth compared to your actual happiness. They say money doesn't equal happiness. I envision Mr. Smith as the embodiment of that greedy obsession entrenched within his mind, it's a struggle that leaves him broken and this reflection of their true self is never fully realized. This man seems fine on the outside, he clearly has all the money he can need, yet he's still not satisfied. It sees him want to push away worldly possessions and live a different way. It might just wash his pain away. As a child, he could recognize the happiness wealth can bring you besides just being useless. Now that he's an adult, he finds it to be his joy, even if it shouldn't be. Reverse mullet is a struggle with accepting yourself despite having something that makes you different from other people. If you have a reverse mullet, you're likely going to get a lot of flack for having it. There's this call to embrace this hairstyle that was clearly not planned. Be proud of it and don't run away from being judged. It'll be a challenge, an endless carpeted alley in a hill that causes tears. Don't make yourself a prisoner to your hair. Nobody's gonna fix it. Just push on through and find your true self. Make that yee-ass haircut part of you. It continues this new metal journey with rapid pace sing rapping on the verses. For the first two minutes, we get a similar alt metal feel until a whole doo-wop section is integrated out of the blue on the interlude. Next, there's a calm playing of the drums for jump scaring you with the intense hook. Then a badass guitar solo closes out the track. M54 embraces more rapping techniques in a similar way to Welcome to Tally Hall where each member gets a chance to perform. We basically get to know each of their personality traits. Bora or Bador is a quirky multilingual hero from deep space with poison laced hair who humorously claims to cause strange effects when sneezing and fights evil by self stabbing with Viewers. He enjoys turning bodies into Tunisian crochet and stealing catacomb offerings, much to his childhood rival Lawrence's dismay. Oh, dip. Lawrence describes himself as the type of guy to take someone's life at a golf course, struggle to shave a horse-like mother, and eat chocolate just like everyone else. Yudban recounts being raised by bears in a rusty chainsaw and gets a boner when he sees a broken seesaw. The members come together and explain how they can't resist the situation they are in, it's just destined to happen. It's part of their journey, builds their character even if it seems unfair. Quite messy, I'm not sure if the drums and guitar match each other's melodic pattern. Just a fun rap rock track that includes a random bagpipe interlude because why not? It just got Celtic in this hoe. Jabberwocky is also off the wall. I haven't heard a lot of metal bands in my defense, so when I hear Bora say something super duper fast and loudly grunt, I just think this is the Tally Hall universe's system of a down. I can imagine Bora walked into the studio with a handful of lyrics, sniffed some coke, and said them as fast as he could. It does slow down towards the end, adding more melodic swing to the instrumental in contrast to the screamo shit we just heard before. Gosh, this is all over the place and I kinda love it. It tells the story of a boy named John. 
He is from South Taiwan and gets brought to a new unfamiliar place against his will through adoption where he clearly struggles to fit in. It's a weird song lyrically where most fans thought the track was complete gibberish. It just sounds like a mental breakdown or panic attack like what is going on here? It's by far the most confusing track I've heard from Kojim so far. I've seen people say it's about capitalism or racism. John needs to confront the reality of his situation and recognize that his adoption, which initially appears to be a positive outcome, is actually corrupt. He was promised a better life as seen through the flashy advertisements, but was ultimately lied to. Waltz in E Major Op 15 Moon Waltz describes the walt between Earth and Moon while using double means to mirror a deteriorating relationship. The way these two appear to be put pushing away from each other. They start with moments of closeness and celebration but gradually become distant. It's confusing. Why did it take so long for them to find time for each other? We see the disconnection with lines like, the last time our module would ring you, and inching out of orbit dividing. A clear end of the relationship. He is clearly unable to obtain the connection, gasping for the last of air and having a lung destruction. The moon's condition is worsening. It sounds crazy but this is true love. There is sadly nothing around them that will soften the situation. After being told everything about this situation, it's time for the relationship to say goodbye, concluding the track. Throughout Waltz shifts from in-your-face hard rock to classical ballroom music with those delightful horns, flute piccolo, and incredible smooth keys, called a waltz for a reason. It's not as crazy as the last few, but it does sound the best on the ears. The piano focused version adds more beauty and swing to the song. Tap 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 is quite unhinged. It could be the mind of a psychopath for all I know. He talks about almost committing bestiality, his bizarre upbringing, and how he wants to kill a pregnant woman, and most infamously, stopping himself from calling people slurs. It could be from the perspective of a man who has gone completely insane in the membrane, leading to him committing murder by crashing his car into a soccer mom's van. The tempo certainly picked up from Waltz with a lot of screamo action to match the unhinged attitude of these lyrics. Possibly the loudest track here, with the instrumental break sounding like police sirens, honestly. It calms down a bit on the bridge as the cops investigate the scene with light guitar textures and soulful singing, until it cuts back to the brainless nutjob playing his next violent murder as he screams uncontrollably. Puzzle Dust is quite depressing, speaking about whether this path you're going down is worth fighting for anymore. He's been at it for several years with no progress looking back. He's lost all of his supporters at this point, now unsure if this dream of his is possible. This causes his mindset to turn into mush on the bridge because seriously, what the fuck are these lyrics? His dreams are basically meaningless. It really brings out Bora's inner death metal self with the throat singing to express his anxious pain. Before the bridge completely changes the vibe with a moment of piano rock, eventually the piano gets completely drowned out by the crushing guitars and drums in traditional Kojim Dip style. A second switch up occurs containing a whole percussion solo of dome bats. This bizarre mix of instruments and switches can only mean one thing. This is Kojinium Dips. City. I love how the entire song sounds like it's falling apart with the uneven piano chords and guitar strums clashing. 134340 Pluto ends off the record. These numbers refer to the guitar chords used in various parts of the song and is named after the minor planet designation for Pluto, which was once considered the ninth planet in the solar system. It speaks about Pluto being upset at being determined a dwarf planet by the IAU in 2006, only being a planet for a third of its first Pluto year of discovery. Pluto feels like its existence has been wiped and is now pointless. It relates to other dwarf planets in the Kuiper belt like Haumea and Makemake. After being stripped of its planet status and feeling disrespected as a dwarf planet, Pluto chooses to exit the solar system out of a sense of insignificance. A lot more low-key in comparison, focusing more on a jazzy piano rock groove put together by Greg Tronica. Certainly more accessible with that genuinely catchy hook. A lot happier in tone despite how sad the lyrics are. Following this release, the Kojum Dip project seemed to be over and done with. Their official website would be closed and redirected to their Bandcamp page. The band's only appearance since was being featured on Joe Holy's Aristotle's Denial from his 2016 album Joe Holy Joe Holy. It's one of the most popular songs from the project, a psychedelic deep cut including instruments played by the band. In 2019, Kojum Dip's self-titled album and a piano version of Moon Waltz performed by Bora were made available 
available on streaming services. A reunion has been teased for years at this point, attempting to resurrect the band from the dead given the resurgence of Tally Hall and Miracle Musical's work. There are now thousands of active fans trying to explore the Tally Hall universe for any spin-off or side projects. Bora announced that a second album was scheduled for release in December of 2019, but it did not happen as you can see. Bora did a few Twitch streams from 2020 to 2022 under the Kojim dip name. During one stream in June 2021, he was asked by a chatter if there was a second record. Bora said yes. Since then, there hasn't been a lot of updates on this album, with fans resorting to digging up archives for unreleased Kojim Dip tracks. Yo, my name is Bo Dure and I've got a big Later in 2022, Boris stated during another Twitch livestream that the second album would be released soon, with no release date made clear. Despite the fact that it's been an entire decade since we've gotten new Kojim Dip, their music has gotten even bigger since their terrors of Michigan in the 2000s. Moon Waltz became the group's biggest song, going viral on TikTok in 2022 and YouTube animator Seer created an animation inspired by the track with over a million views. The latest news for Kojum Dip came this year. There were reports from attendees of the Edgy and Friends opener for Jukebox of the Ghosts on May 17, 2024, indicating that Bora confirmed a new album is in progress. After hearing this music and seeing what they were capable of, I've decided that I need to see one Kojim Dip show in my lifetime. Given the fact that I literally live in Michigan, it could be possible. If you're seeing this, Bora, one time for the one time, please, trust me, it'll be a great decision. If you enjoyed this chaotic video and want to see more, please leave a like and subscribe for more Based content. I'll see you all in the next one. Make sure to love all and peace.